Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? Get off the screen. It's not working there. You hear it. Oh, hey, technical problems there. Good afternoon to you, Garimera, Garispera, Garinita. Welcome to the Warm and Toasty Online Memory Afternoon, episode 111. Well, what's happening in your world? Are you well out there? Are things going good for you? It's gone mad in the shops. If you go to the shops now, I thought, oh, I popped down to the supermarket. I don't know if it was, I think it was Wednesday. Um, yeah, Wednesday, yeah. Um, <laughs> went down there. There was not one trolley left. It was like it was Christmas. There was so many people in there. And I thought, hold on a minute. The kids are still at school. It's that sort of time where people go and pick them up. What is going on? Don't know. I think. The world goes a little bit mad, or certainly the UK goes a little bit mad as it gets closer to Christmas. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, we've got a lovely show for you this afternoon. We've got the retro raffle. We've got retro food of the week. We've got Jeanette doing the poem of the week. And we have a special guest all the way from Scotland, live and direct. Mr. Tom Houston will be singing and chatting with us in a little while. Tom Hardy, our good friend and co-host, he's away today, but we do have Jeanette Lyons. Let's see if I can bring her to the screen. Are you there? Yes, she is. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello there, Jeanette. Hi. How are you on your side of Colchester? I'm all right. Uh, the weather's a bit grey out there, I have to say, but I made the most of it yesterday. My motorbike was in the repairs shop for a month. Uh, big problems. And um, it came back at the weekend, and I got to go out on it yesterday for a good couple of hours. So all's well in my world when I'm riding my bike. Oh, that's good. I just uh, saw. A... I wouldn't... Sorry. No, I just saw a note there from Tom Hardy, our normal co-host. Oh. Um, hello, you're as clear as a bell here in the channel. Oh, he's, oh, he's swimming the channel. Sailing? No, he's sailing. Oh, he's sailing Surely. the channel. <laughs> Do you think he's swimming? No. I've heard a lot of people do that thing called uh, wild water swimming or just swimming, it's yes. called, but not in a, a chlorinated pool. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we've, um, we've, uh, a, a, I've got the word, but we've a friend that sort of does a bit of swimming, quite a bit of swimming in the sea. Oh my God. I, 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 I admire anybody that can. He's swimming, he says. Yeah, he's got all the fat on, you know, where they put all the lard, lard on them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jenny, Dr. Jenny Lifko, former queen of the retro raffle scene, reinstated queen. Um, she says, cold. Hello, everyone. Thanks yeah. for the reminder yesterday. Um, you're welcome. Um, hope you are good, if a little cold. Like me, take a little bit of apple cider vinegar every day. One tablespoon in a drink. That will help. There we go. That's Dr. Jono's advice. Jeanette's back on a motorbike. Also, I wanted to ask you, after you've been on the motorbike, have you ever been surfing? Surfing? Yeah, because you've done everything. But it just occurred to me, Tom's swimming in the channel. Yeah, no, I haven't. I've never done anything like that. I'm not very good with water. I, I'm, <laughs> I can swim and I can tread water for hours, but I don't enjoy being in water at all. I When I was, um, I joined the gym to go swimming earlier in the year, and Lorraine and I, I used to do 30 lengths in the morning, like half past yeah. six in the morning. I don't know how I did it because I really don't like being in water. I'm, I don't like swimming, and so and I, I definitely wouldn't like falling in. And I think with surfing or windsurfing things like that, I'd fall in. And I, yeah, and be, if people splash me, oh, so I can't be around children in a swimming pool. I, I just want to push them under. Oh, I was thinking you, you could be like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. They could fit your motorbike to a surfboard especially oh. in full so it could take the weight balance and you could be on your motorbike going across the water like a hover jet bike yeah a, a jet ski i've a never tried ski. one of those well i'm i will be going on holiday in three weeks oh, uh, yes. to a very hot beach resort and mm. if there are any jet skis there i might try one. 
Oh, send uh, videos to see how good you are. Bet you. Oh, well, the rain will be doing it. She'll be on the beach taking a video, laughing. Yeah, well, I bet you're good at it. <laughs> you're good at most things, really, aren't you? Well, mm, <laughs> that's debatable. Have you ever seen me play darts? <laughs> oh, no, I, no. <laughs> yeah. I um, I played. We got a set of darts, and for some reason, when I was a kid we decided to put the darts board. We weren't really thinking about it. We thought we'd put it at the bottom of the stairs and we'd put it in front of the radiator and we'll throw the darts from the top of the stairs because it's a bit more interesting than just throw it. <laughs> threw it and within a few throws, it went clean through the radiator pipe. Oh, no. And there was water. <laughs> water. <laughs> Oh God, my dad was not <laughs> pleased. Well, um, I'll have a chat with the guy that has the. That I, where do I play? I meet with my friend Daryl sometimes at the Grenadier, and they have a dartboard there. That's where I play. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's much around the dartboard. I mean, there's some tables and chairs, and you think, yeah, nobody's going to sit there while anyone's yeah, playing. Yeah. I hope. Jeanette's in, Jeanette's in, move, <laughs> yeah. away, move away. Everyone get behind her, not anywhere in front of her vision. <laughs> yeah. Just it's funny how things make you remember it. I remember our first landing on that, that house we lived in, yeah. was a council estate in Hackney. And one day I decided we had a Hoover and it was said that I wanted upright ones oh, yeah. with a bag along the side. Um, and I decided I'm going to put the Hoover at the bo bottom ground floor level. And we're going to leapfrog it from the top of the <gasps> stairs. Oh my God. I caught it on my academicals underneath. Oh my God. I was <gasps> sore for weeks. <laughs> oh, I that remember our stairs. We didn't do anything quite so dangerous as that, but we did used to turn the little coffee table upside down. So the legs stood up and we'd hold the front of them and we'd slide down the stairs on the uh, table. Classic. I think we, we we were caught. I mean parents used to go out and leave kids then didn't they and it wasn't you know yeah I don't know how legal that was but there were four of us and we were just such a danger to ourselves and anybody else. You don't care. I mean four kids <laughs> maybe not all at the same time on a table upside down going down the stairs it's a road to ruin isn't it? Well, I think we just take it in turns. I don't think Alan and Lorraine got much of a look in because they were the little ones. Me and Paul, yeah, we had great fun. <laughs> We'd give them bits of cardboard. <laughs> in days <laughs> before uh, health and safety, I, I'm imagining. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dr. Jenny, obviously being Dr. Jenny, she says she does take cider vinegar every day already. Oh, yeah. oh, oh interesting, interesting. Um, My sister has a cup of hot water first thing in the morning with a fresh slice of lemon in it. I don't Good know if she idea. has any ginger in it, but she has lemon and, and water first thing, then the big strong coffee. Yeah, it's good. It's good to cleanse. It's good to cleanse. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, ginger, that's for nausea. That's good. Uh, the nurses used to give um, flat Coca-Cola in hospitals right. for people that were nauseous, often um, yeah. pregnant ladies. Yes, I had a lot of ginger when I was pregnant with Neve. I was so queasy all the time i was never sick but i was so queasy for three months and i had uh ginger biscuits gingerbread <laughs> um i i ended up having i got so sick of the taste of ginger which let's come back i like it again now but i had little ginger capsules and garlic capsules that's supposed to be good for you and so i'd have them did they help the taste of anything well i was never actually sick and it right. was just that first trimester as they call it that you know pretty much to the day when i was when it was three months it just stopped and i was never never sick at all while i was pregnant okay. but i had a lot of ginger <laughs> yeah i um i had a one a little while ago where you boil uh so cut up a whole lemon take out the seeds and then a good chunk of ginger excuse me yeah. you do that for about 15 minutes and then you zap it all in the blender you let it cool you put it in the fridge it, it can last for a little while, but f f sort of the first three days, it's probably got its most potency and it's really good for you and it's good for your yeah. digestion. And it's if you want to lose weight, it's not going to be a massive thing, but it does help. Yeah. Um, I've stopped doing that and I can't remember why I've stopped doing it, but it will come back to me. Um, yeah. So I found it very good at keeping things at bay. I mean, yeah. maybe we should do a sort of episode where we're talking about things that we know that, um, that will keep ailments at bay. Things that we yeah, do, old old wives' tales maybe, but you know some things actually work. And you know, I think 
you can swear by some things, even though they sound a bit odd. Yeah, totally, totally. Let's do the retro raffle. Yay! If the button gets pressed. <laughs> I haven't got it. <laughs> it's the retro raffle. And it's coming to your screen. It's the retro raffle. Never has been seen. It's the retro raffle. And it's coming. It's coming to your screen. It's very quiet. I mustn't sing over it's it. Coming, <laughs> it's coming to your screen. Retro Apple Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know we know that the, the world sort of discovered it. If you if you're doing these sort of things, you you it's one person at a time, normal, isn't it? Talking. Yeah. Or it just blocks it out. But anyway, in a slight shuffle, we're going to make the retro raffle a retro raffle and a bit of a memory. So, to win these prizes. Um, we're having a bit of a food thing going on because we've got um, retro food of the week, and I thought we could, you could have a nice tea as a prize, um, oh. any time of day. Smash Heinz beans with pork sausages in. You don't get them so much. A bit pricey <laughs> for most people. Um, we're going to make afternoon, Wendy. We're going to make these the prizes today virtually. Um, Get your mash, mash, get smash, and your Heinz beans, pork sausages. Don't remember the <clears> jingle. <throat> um, they're your virtual prize. And all can we you... sing the jingles? Yeah, could you go on him? Oh. <clears throat> um, so for mash, get smash, uh, I can't remember anything else, but beans, a million housewives every day. Pick up a tin of beans and say, Beans, means beans, Heinz. Heinz. Wow, nice that's, one. Yeah? You, <laughs> that's that all I brilliant. Remember. Really, thank you for that. <laughs> Do you remember there was the one the smash with the Daleks doing it? They weren't Daleks, were they? They were, they were um, imitation. They their heads looked like those little um sherbet rice paper things. Um the little <laughs> flying, flying saucers. saucers. Yeah, that's what the heads looked like. They were kind of oh, like, wow. wide in my memory. Maybe they didn't look like that, but that's how I yeah. remember. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to look that up later because they did something up. We will make you eat. Smash, I can't uh, remember what, what was that? Someone will remember it. <laughs> anyway, to win those lovely prizes in your mind, um, all you've really got to do is answer this question. Who has made you laugh through your life? Be it family, TV, radio, points of your life, one point or through your life, anyone you can think of. That's what we want to hear. It's a nice little memory, a uh, happy, upbeat memory. Starting with, as Tom's away today, he's swimming the channel. Um, Jeanette, covered in lard. <laughs> you laugh a lot. Um, I do laugh a lot. Yeah. You laugh for a living. That some these people. are laughter lines. See what exactly. I did there, Jeanette lines. Laughter you lines. Get it, Jeanette. We're a laughter yeah. lines. Um, yeah. Who's made you laugh through your life when you all just... my life since I was um, still at school is my friend Gary. He makes me cry laughing. He's just so funny. Um, it, it, I had brunch with him last week and he made me laugh. He said that he was talking to somebody about um, like when you get old and, and you don't want to be there anymore and, and you kind of, you don't want to be a burden to people. And, mm. and it was just all kind of, you know, a bit doom and gloom because his mum's just gone into a home and, and it's quite sad. And um, he was saying that, you know, he's kind of got this idea that to not be a burden on people, that he is going to start saving up the gunpowder from fireworks and just collect them all each year, just all the unspent gunpowder, collect it all, sew, the, sew it all into some kind of vest. He's going to fashion a, some kind of waistcoat type thing with all this gunpowder from fireworks in. It may take some time, obviously. Obvious, obvious. But then he's going to go to Mersey, which isn't too far away from Colchester. And mm -hmm. so he'll go there. He will steal a rowboat. And then he's going to row out as far as he can and be away from everyone, right out to sea. And then, you know, light the firework vest. So he will be gone. Nobody will have the burden of having to deal with him. He'll just be blown into a million pieces that will feed the fish and the seagulls. So just win-win all around. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't quite tell if he was serious or not, but I think he wasn't. 
So, and that was just, what a crazy thing. He makes me laugh with his slight craziness Madcap. that he would think of fireworks. Now I'm never going to be able to see a firework without thinking, oh, Gary might need that. <laughs> Well, isn't it in the Indian culture they uh, often put people in boats and they set them alight? And that was Viking, Val Vikings. Val the way to the Indian Val culture. Valor. Sorry, yeah, Indian very people. similar. <laughs> the Vikings. Oh, that's that's yeah. ruined. That's ruined that connection. Were, they'd, they'd put them into a boat and sail them off, and and that was their <clears throat> journey. <clears throat> Excuse me, journey to Valhalla. I think they called it. They're kind oh, of heaven. See? You know history stuff. Um, <laughs> the Swedish people. I do remember when I first, well, my first memory of laughter was actually, and it probably came a lot earlier than this, but one that I can recall was when I was young and my family were watching Some Mothers Do Have Them and laughing at oh, yeah. Frank Spencer hanging onto a bus on roller skates or something, doing his own stunts, watching it on a little wooden TV that got two channels or something. I remember watching that as a family. We'd all sit around watching that. It'd be brilliant. And just when when my mum laughed, you would just laugh because she was so happy and it was just so lovely. It made life lovely. Did you feel the same way when your when your parents laughed? It oh, just... totally. And I think that's part of why I started the Warm and Toasty Club was to kind of reimagine those days where you know sometimes there was a, a warm fire on, people were gathered together, family. Somebody might be doing a song at some point. We might be watching a TV show. And I think a big part of it was my parents having passed, was bringing the warm and toasty forward, was really try to get capture that again, where yeah. they're just glorious family and friends, happy times. Um, yeah, it really does. And and just the, the memories that everybody talks about, they just trigger so many more of your own, don't they? It's Oh, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I mean, I love I'm amazed at our ability to hang on to sort of Use useless cultural information in one sense, but just lovely nostalgia. Um, yeah, and you know we we both do it, don't we? But um, yeah, that was the first time. I'm just reading Wendy's comment. She actually says, going back to the smash, is it they peel them with their metal knives and then they smash them all to bits <sighs> and they laugh? What? <laughs> That's they peel absolutely them with right. their metal knives. Yes. Well Brilliant, done, Wendy. Wendy. Well remembered. See, she <laughs> she's got this up here. She she yeah. Captures she's all smart this. cooking. She also says Laurel and Hardy always made makes me smile, even though I've seen them loads and loads. Yes, I've got I've got a modern one. A guy on the telly. Um, I don't not on all of his shows, but Bob Mortimer. Um, right. I, I he just has me in hysterics when he's on. Would uh, would I lie to you? And he's talking. So the the premise is you're going to tell a story, and the panel have to work out if it's if it's true or if it's a liar. And he would tell stories about oh the one that was a killer was like um, I do my own dentistry, and then he asked him a series of uh -huh. questions, and then he talks about. Yeah, I used this thing. I was at the dentist and I heard this magic word, Fuji 9, Fuji 9. He said, and I thought, if I could get, get hold of some of that Fuji 9, I'll be able to do my own dentistry. And he says, I've got a big island in the middle of his kitchen and I put my son's gaming chair on top of the island and then, because it's nearer the big light, and then I've got a mirror and then I get the other thing in and I can look in and see what I've got. And he says, and I do my own um fillings dentures don't do crowns um and that sort of thing and you have to work out whether it's and he says this long story and i just it was hysterical and then they they all say is it true for is it a lie sure enough it's true and then he says another one which was um oh uh theft and shrubbery so when he was young him, him and a gang of friends would hang out around people's houses and then they'd get nearer and nearer. And they, while they're watching telly, they'd be outside. Uh, do beg your pardon, but we are in your garden. I do <laughs> beg your pardon. And then they say, is it, they ask him lots of questions. Is it true or is it a lie? And then they go, oh, that's got to be a lie. And it's true. And it, it, <laughs> he did. And I just find him hysterical. Um, and like Wendy says, love Bob Mortimer on the fishing program he does with Paul Whitehouse. He's still funny doing that. He is Wendy, but the only thing is I found 
Paul Whitehouse, he's a really moany old sod. Um, <laughs> and he just has a go at Bob all the time, which I find a bit... Mm. Um, anyway, there we go. That's oh, laughter. What, Anyone else? What do you think of Peter Kay? Oh, I love Peter Kay. I love Me that. too. I, yeah, I just, it, I relate to sort of the things Point, that he does. Exactly. And somebody pointed out to me the other day, it's not so much that this was a young person saying, um, he, is he really funny though? What What is it that you like? And we kind of worked out that what he does, it's um, it's nostalgia rather than comedy. It's, it's not observational. It's nostalgic observational. So that's you hit the nail on the head there that it reminds you of everything it's like he's describing your life and um, the other guy um oh who's the london fella that's uh oh, dark hair curly uh, curly hair mickey flanagan uh, yes him him i find really funny but that's the same thing again that's nostalgic stuff that he talks about I, I think it, it, it is, and I think it's what we do as well. And I think, um, I mean, people, that, I wish I had a pound for every time people says you remind me of Mick, Mickey Flanagan. Um, yeah, you're um, like the clean version. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm staying in, in. Um, <laughs> I think it's it, it's often it's working class reference points, not always working class, but often more than not, the things that we used to do. And, you know, when we yeah. grew up, there was a lot of telly, there was a lot of, music in our lives um and going out we did certain things and i think they just touch on those points and i think it's somebody said it is sort of like making uh the mundane everyday part of life something rather genius about it and yeah. it is it's just a nostalgia and, and, and that's why i like yeah. it okay um and mickey flanagan too but i don't know loads about mickey flanagan i've watched some of his um, I've watched everything, I think. <laughs> well, it it was the same for me in school. I remember he told a story about um the, the careers teacher, and I had the careers teacher, um, and I'd heard a friend say before I went in to see the careers teacher, um, I'm going to work in a garage. And I just thought, I'll just say that, because, I, you know, my brain was empty. Um, so I just went into the careers teacher and said, you know, well, I hope that I'm going to be able to work in a garage. And the careers teacher was like, you'll never work in a garage. You're never in your whole life you're going to be able to work in a garage. And it was a bit like Mickey Flanagan's routine where he went into the the, the careers teacher and he says, um, I'm going to drive a van or something, was it? Oh, I've forgotten the, the, the routine. Uh, you you can't drive a van. You can only carry stuff to the van, and it's it's the same sort of thing. It's the sort, sort of schooling we had, the education we had, um, the upbringing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love Peter Kay. He makes me, even though I've watched it a hundred times. There was he we was doing the um. It's really silly and it's really low rent, but in a wonderful way where he does the misheard lyrics in songs. Oh yes, that is uh, so funny. But just watch it the other day as Living well. Living life in a Femi Dom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wendy says she used to love Dave Allen. Yeah. Oh, oh, I remember him. Dave Allen. Yeah, yeah my mum loved him because we were Irish, so you know she kind of had this affinity with anything Irish. I think, but he used to scratch his head, didn't he? he had a finger missing. Yeah, had a finger and he'd missing. scratch his head, but from the other side. Yeah, never just scratch that side. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Weird nice. Things. Well, they're on they're on a view for you for a little while. Keep your memories coming in. We're gonna welcome our guest. I can see he's sitting there patiently in our green area. Um it's Mr. Tom Houston. Hello, sir. Hey. Well, how yeah, are you? Great. Um, I'm okay. Fascinated by your chit chat. There's a Did lot you want to join in? <laughs> no, I, I just I the 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 mind would go to different places of of uh, whatever wherever wherever the mind goes to it was uh, yeah who's made you laugh who sort of what did you laugh at for yeah, your life i i you it's always difficult to ask me a question because there's kind of trying to trying to reach into it so the easy one right at the end there was um when when i was a kid it was spike milligan and uh, marty feldman <laughs> yeah and and then I was thinking before that I was you know that bit of God, God I'm a hard man to please so it's like I'll be the doer droll sort of guy. It's like yeah I don't find that funny anymore. I know. 
And yet, when I get a good connection, um, it, I just love it being based on humour, uh, you know, out of the intellect or whatever. And and it's probably best if it's you kind of doing something and it's just you 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 get the funny side of it. And I like I like the so it, the, there's a bit there of the connection um, without sort of like just almost an absurd connection based in reality um and uh yeah so i i kind of i i, I like that i it's kind of and it, and it, and that moves me um my uh my uh part my part i'll, I'll mention that my, my partner's uh, mother is is terminally ill at the moment and the last time i visited but her humor still kind of shone through the the pain and she she was like she, she was going to oh god she said mary mary ann stewart as as a local neighbor she's put me at the post i she she's 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 died before her oh but, but it was like, <laughs> it. and it's such a kind of just a kind of spirit in in it but it was done with a humor it kind of like it just it, it kind of yeah that that appeals to me at the moment i don't know anyway whatever hello anyway. hello good <laughs> afternoon great you're with us tom whereabouts are you is it sterling that you live uh telecutri near sterling it's about eight miles away telecutri 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 all the way live and direct isn't it marvelous of the internet and he's got the clearest picture of all of us yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he looks, you know, fantastic. We can see the kind of detail in the in the painting behind him. Whereas, yeah. well, Jeanette that's, says, "John, I'll go with the orange light. It'll give you a bit of colour, that, dear." That, <laughs> that, <laughs> I could do this on myself. Sorry, picture. Tom. When when we talk, I just say this, Tom. When we talk, we've got to be really careful because when we talk, you totally cut out. So, say oh. your piece on your own. Yeah. This is a picture of not of Tillicutri, that's of Badeninyal, um, uh, up in the northwest coast of Scotland. You could oh. do some work up there. Yeah, to do some work, yeah. So you're going to sing us a song, are you? Are you going to pick up your guitar yeah. and do your thing? Yeah, I, I decided I, I decided I was going to do a, a two-for-one offer right at the very beginning. Can I do that? Yes, yeah. you can. <laughs> it was... It was um, God, I'm overstaying my welcome, aren't I? Uh, so it was, it was, it was, I could fall out with Jeanette over this, but I thought I'd do it anyway. So it's a wee, it's a wee poem that I wrote in um, down in Devon when I was down there, 2018 or something. Anyway, it's called the Early Morning Swimmers. It just, it was just like when you were chatting. It was like, so here we go. Okay, so I, let, let us get out of the way. And let you and have the floor after this as well. Yeah, you what carry on and tell us. Afterwards. Tell us when you're ready for you, us to come back. Okay, here so, we go. We're going to move off the screen. It's Tom Houston. Hello there. <laughs> so um, this is the uh, early morning swimmers. I pause on the beach. Standing close to the sea, feeling the spray and the wind and each wave crashing. And then I listen as the water draws back the pebbles. Today, if I include myself, there are four of us, all singles, although the woman who went in and came out at the rocks, she's got two small dogs. Another woman lies in the sun for a while, sheltering from the wind. After my swim, I join the others in looking out to sea. We take in the blue, the space, the rolling of the waves, feeling the blood and warmth return to our bodies. But unusually for what might be considered gentle souls we were all wishing that some sort of disaster would befall the jet skier so that was um early morning swimmers um and it 
it's I'm going to start off with the November blues. I know it's December, but um, we're just out of November. And it's the time to book your holidays. Here comes a billboard, all blue sky and sun, white teeth on the beach, we're all having fun. The skies are dark, there's a frost in the air. The bus that I'm on, destination despair. And I didn't choose the November blues. I'm trying so hard to shine a light on my face, but each kick in the guts gets harder to take. And I'm trying to lose the November blues. There's a show tonight, dancers and stage, the sound and the lights. I want to be up there, I want to live, but I got to hold back when I've got so much to give. are cold, there's a flame in my throat, so I pull up my collar and stick my hands in my coat and broadcast the news, the November blues. There's a show tonight, dancers on stage, the sound and the lights, I want to be up there, I want to live. But I gotta hold back when I've got so much to give. Here comes a billboard, all blue sky and sun, white teeth on the beach, we're all having fun. The bus is packed, I guess I'm not alone. Most of us are wishing that we were home, paying the dues, November blues. The feeling will go, at least it usually does. In three more stops, I'm off this bus, changing the view, November blues. I'm changing the view. November blues, and that's me finished. That was absolutely lovely. Well, forget the poem and the jet ski comment, but the song was lovely. <laughs> I could I, doing your motorbike on the water. Look, this here's me willing you to. <laughs> I know. Rude. That's really yeah. good. Uh, sort of um. It reminded me of sort of like a, a Scottish L Leonard Cohen piece. Yeah, I was thinking Leonard Cohen or even Tom Waits. Oh, it's lovely. Tom well, thanks. Really, really nice. Yeah, thank you for both of those comments. You're welcome. Is it a new one that you've written or is it just happened to be November in previous year when it was yeah, it's, it's 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 one that comes around every November. It's probably about four or five years old, that one. It was actually, um, I was... Uh, my uh, a, my eldest was a, on the on the phone, and there are a break dancer, and nothing much was happening, and they're putting so much into their career, and and they're always they're living in London, so always um, on the transport. And we just we were just empathising with the, the the kind of like. You know that the state of a the fragile state of an artist having so much putting so much money working and not getting it back and then feeling a bit, uh, you know, having a bit of a cold and stuff like that as well. Um, but um, so that's where that one came from. Ah. 
Very nice, very nice indeed, Mr. Tom Houston. Thank you very much. Um, you you we... mentioned your family oh, there, oh, yeah. and you haven't mentioned them uh, a great deal in the past. And how do your children feel about having a, a cool musician dad? Are they? Oh, God, that's 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 um, well, um, that's a good question. So the. The, the one reason I hesitate is Emma now identifies as they, them. So I, I had two daughters um, and, and I've still got two daughters, but I have Emma and Catherine. Um, I, you would have to, at, at one sense, Kat, uh, Emma goes, oh, you, you can make me cry that any time the music co comes along. And they're, they're so from that point of view, uh, you would have to ask them. I think they're, they're pretty supportive. They, they they tolerate it and they don't say that they don't cry because it's really bad to them <laughs> no, no <clears throat> it, it, it's not tears of pain <laughs> <laughs> with their ears bleeding <laughs> only stop it for god's sake dad stop it <laughs> oh well that's good that's good that you can touch their their hearts and reach their souls um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to have your uh, impression on our next bit, we're, but we're going to say goodbye to you just for a moment or two, and we'll be back with you after our next feature. See you in a minute, Tom. Yep. Tom Houston there. Lovely gentleman. Now it is time for Retro Food of the Week. Do you like food? <laughs> when you know you're gonna get some Do you like food? Yum, 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 yum. Never bubble gum But joy for your tum tum And it all comes down to this Retro food It's rather bland But this Oh retro food How I loved you so I love yes, that jingle indeed. Retro food of the week Um on episode 111. First up, we have two firm favourites. They might be hard to pick between, but I mean, get, get the right pictures. The first one up is liver and bacon. Now, I remember we used to have this in our house. Cookbook, cookbook authors such as Xavier Raskin in 1922 have suggested the dish of liver and bacon was French in origin. origin. It appears in American cook's books as early as 18, 1857 and in Scotland as early as 1862. For many years, liver was quite inexpensive in the United States as many Americans were not interested in it. As Americans became more cosmopolitan in their taste, they learned to appreciate new dishes. This trend combined with the discovery of the nutritional value of iron-rich liver caused an increase in demand for and the price for of liver the hairy bikers the duo the cook duo uh the chef duo apparently have a nice recipe for it that involves quite a lot of butter and rolling the liver in flour before cooking it not done that before very often served this dish is very often served with onion gravy mashed potato and cabbage Jeanette tell me about your experiences if any with liver and bacon my mum used to make that when I was little and I, her food oh. was awful anyway. She Bad cook, mum. cook ever, mm. yeah. But liver and bacon. I liked the. <clears throat> I think I quite liked the gravy from it, and and bits of bacon. So I didn't mind the flavour. It's a texture thing with liver. I I don't eat liver or kidney or heart. Mm -hmm. It's a texture thing. So the smell of it is kind of a bit weird as well. But the yeah. taste of I I would dip my mashed potato in the gravy that's as good as that's i can about, is it yeah well we used to have it when when i was younger my mum was a, a, a pretty good cook actually i was lucky very lucky mm. um, and i remember having it cooking it myself with a rich onion gravy when um probably when my kids were small and we really liked it and sometimes i just used to cook the liver on its own and then cut it up into very fine little squares like that and it was a great training aid for the dog. If the dog done something well, he got a little tiny bit of liver. Oh. And he'd be able to <laughs> well when you had the liver with you. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> all the local hounds would follow you all the way home. Um, that the was liver in, man. Yeah. yeah, he's the liver man. Um, 
and I haven't had it in years, but it was actually really nice. And it's one of those things, you know, if people talk about old foods that they used to have, like tripe and onions, yeah, I'd be like, ooh, stuffed hearts, ooh. Yeah. Funny enough, liver and bacon was a good childhood experience. So right. I wouldn't say we carried it on completely because we don't have it now, but we did then. Mm. don't really eat bacon. I, there's a turkey rasher, so you can get there a lot better uh, for my, oh, yeah. my body. Um, my I think my people. sister likes things like that my sister likes stuffed hearts and liver and bacon and steak and kidney pie and things but it's yeah she never cooks out here thank goodness i think kgb offered to make me liver and bacon once and it's like please don't ever. please don't oh bless yeah. um, okay that goes against and there's not loads of people out there today our regulars i can see are not with us um i hope they're well and they're doing good but people have lives and they're <clears> right. You can't be here every yeah. fortnight. And it's getting near to it's that, Yeah, it's getting December and then things go mad. Yeah. Liver and bacon goes against bangers and mash. Bangers and mash, also known as sausages and mash, sausages and potato, is a, tradi 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 is a traditional British dish <laughs> consisting of sausages served with mashed potatoes. Again, you, you would have a gravy with it. This dish, even when cooked at home, may be thought of, an, of as an... Oh, maybe thought of as an example of pub grub, meaning it is relatively quick and easy to make in large quantities. In 2009, the dish was listed as Britain's most popular comfort food in a survey commissioned by TV channel Good Food. Is there a TV channel called Good Food? I think there is. On um, I've got Virgin Cable TV, and I think there is a Good Food channel because Lorraine watches lots of TV. <sighs> Food Look, programs. I can't even I can't even watch the bake off unless I've got something in front of me that I can same here. <laughs> yeah. Too hungry. Yeah. Although it's sometimes stated that the term bangers had its origins in World War Two, the term was actually in use at least as far back as 1919. The term bangers is attributed in common usage in the UK to the fact that sausages made more during World War One when there were meat shortages, were made with such a high water content that they were liable to pop under high heat when cooked. Um, oh, bangers and mash. That's, a, that's still, I wouldn't say it's like a weekly thing, but that's something I have now. You, Jeanette? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't have it very often, but it's made me think I do want that now. <laughs> that would be really nice. We've got pie and mash and cabbage for dinner tonight, but... Ooh. Yeah, sausages, really nice. Oh, oh, pie. I thought you said pie, pie. and mash. We're, we're going to have, this is, you're like this, talking of retro food. We're having a Frey Bentos pie, you Ooh. know, in a tin. We're going to have one tonight, a steak and gravy one. So, but so, you know, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, you know, we're going to have cabbage and mashed potato and onion gravy. Got to have that, haven't you? But yeah, sausages. I think if I were doing sausages and mash, I would probably just make some Yorkshire puddings as well, which would then make it toad in the hole, kind of. Toad yeah. out the hole. Well, I can't eat those, but I might <clears throat> have, I might have peas. Uh, with it. Peas seem to go well with bangers and mash and a bit of gravy. Do you have gluten-free sausages? I don't because a lot of them tend to be gluten-free. Well, let me put it another way. Often the ones that you buy are gluten-free, but um, if they're not, I still don't. What it is, Jeanette, look, let's get down to the basics here. <coughs> Gluten-free, I really can't eat bread or pasta that's um, normal um, right. wheat. But other things, I can have a little of. Right. Certain types of things. Like If I want, if I wanted to eat biscuits, I don't. But if I wanted to sneak a few, I, I have a couple of sugar-free ones, and they've got wheat in. Yeah. I'm okay. I've not got a problem. It's I only ask that because that. you're my you're what I consider one of my gluten free friends. The yeah. other one is my oldest friend Gary. He but he's proper celiac. If mm. he had the hint of flour, he would be really in loads of pain later on. Yeah, I, um, when I first had it, I was I was bad. But yeah, I, he I can't eat so, normal sausages at all. So. I think. Uh, oh yeah, that's a shame. Um, I, over the years, I've just added a little bit of stuff back in. So it is uh, an advisory thing now rather than um, a medical um, doodah, as they yeah. like to term. Medical, medical terminology, doodah. Yes, uh, do you've got that doodah. Um, oh, smash, bangers and mash were lovely. For very wow. nice. Um, as they do, actually, a very nice sausage. I think it's a Lincolnshire. Um, very nice. 
Yes. Is it Cumberland or Lincolnshire? There's a Cumberland and there's a Lincolnshire. They're both. Yeah, they're, they're both a bit good. more spicy, aren't they? A bit more herby. They've got a bit more herb about them, and which is yeah, nice. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, we like that here too. So those are the choices. Um, all three or four of you watching. Liver and bacon, moment. sausage and mash. Liver and bacon wow. against sausage and mash. I know um, more people come and pick up the show as it goes, or often a little after, or a long time after. But um, what would you vote for? Let's ask Mr. Tom Houston. He's sitting there. He's probably dropping off listening to us talking. <laughs> but he also could be pondering the answer to that question. Tom. Yeah, well, I, I haven't, um, haven't kind of uh, made an enemy out of Jeanette earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> but on a on a kind of I really the the liver thing I I kind of and I really love the the notion of the closest you wanted to get was the potatoes in the gravy you didn't want to go yeah. anywhere <laughs> and I think I, I near near liver once in my life and it's traumatized me for mm. for ever um, so whatever I'm voting for I'm not voting for liver. Well, Do you we eat know. pate though? That's a, I mean, it's a weird thing. I I really like pate. Not liver. Liver pate. Yeah, it's, yeah. I I can't do that. But, so, but the texture's different. I was bonding with you, and now you're 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 going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. don't try and get try don't try and get back in my good books. <laughs> no, your pate's gubbed. I'm not going for your car car. No, uh, mushroom pate maybe. Uh, smoked smoked. But I'm, I'm taking it away. I'm, I'm taking it away from from your listeners. Yeah. Well, well another thing that um, liver, when you do cook it, if you don't want to eat it, you can use it as an eraser in your school books. It's quite good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a doorstop. Feed it to the dog. Oh, the dogs yeah. love it. They love it. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I never, it was, I went to a Chinese doctor and once, well, like, like more than once, but this particular one, and there was an advice to uh, to eat liver. So it's it's like either my nemesis or or my cure, but I've always had it as my nemesis. So um, uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, a person very close to me went to a Chinese um, herbalist doctor, and um, they gave them this mixture that you boiled up and then you drank. It's really strong smelling. You drank it. And it helped to help you get pregnant, got pregnant, um, went back to the Chinese herbalist and they said, oh, cheap baby. Um, and that, yeah, it's good, good stuff from the Chinese herbalist. Um, I, I like it. Anyway, moving on, let me get rid of this out of your eye line, Tom. We don't know living near you. You're going to do us another piece, are you? Yeah, I've 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 changed I, I've I've changed my set, which no one else would know if I hadn't said it. Um I, one of the things I, I like doing and is is pulling together different strands that probably don't make any sense to anyone. So um I'll give you a hint, two or three of them. Will I do that, Jono? Uh yeah. So just we I tell you what, we're gonna give you the, the, the floor, we're gonna give you the stage and we're gonna get out oh, of your oh. way. And yeah. just give us a shout when you're done. Yeah. Turn the light off before we go to bed. See you in a minute. Tom Houston, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, this is a song called Candy Floss, and it, it started off with a, a, a mate posted a poem on on um, on Facebook, and it was all about uh, a memory from from a from boyhood about him going into the woods, and it was a beautiful descriptive piece about uh, the woods and. Uh, uh, the smell and w what evoking in, in, in winter. And I said, brilliant piece, Davey. And he said, you were there. And and it's right, I, I, I'd i driven, I'd driven, we must have been about 17 or something. I just passed my test and we drove into the woods. And then I got me, remember one of the time we used to go on crazy adventures and one adventure we went on is, is we, 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 we drove out uh, outside Glasgow, went up a hill and we buried treasure. Uh, whatever we had in our pockets in an old tin um and so it was that and then another thing that I remembered was in in my youth or you know at that at that age mm -hmm. 17 girls uh, were were a mystery to me um still are really 
Anyway, candy floss. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, what's 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 that? What's it? Memories are floating out of the box The taste of trifle and second thoughts About girls in bikinis, sunburned skin Hidden treasure and the man within We enter the carnival and buy candy floss The smell of elephants and hoops to be tossed And the spark of the dodgeons, the fun of the fair I want to get close and take in the air I'm a mortal, take my picture, take my picture and turn your telephone to me. Share the feeling, share the feeling, post an update, post an update and turn your memory on me, turn it on. Sugar and spice and everything nice Spun on a stick in a ball We carry it round so it's easily found But there's nothing to chew on at all No, nothing at all Nothing Nothing at all, nothing at all. Memories and day trips, the seasons change, the clock ticks softly. We find a new page with girls in dodgeons and sunburnt skin, the hidden treasure and the man within. Memories are sinking back in the box with the taste of trifle, bangers and mash, bacon and liver, and anything else you would care to eat. With the taste of trifle and candy. And that's me. So it is always a delay, Tom. There's always a delay, just in case. 
that was like, I like the special little reference at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon and liver. The Bing. That was very lovely. Um, normally, we'd have people <clears throat> giving loads of comments saying how wonderful you are. But it's become December, and I, I've realised how the world just goes a bit mad, or the, certainly the country goes a bit mad, and normal um, behaviours are no longer the normal behaviour. <laughs> There's, I suppose, a mixture of between manicness and hibernationishness. Is that a yes. word? <laughs> yes, it's definitely Words. a word. Yes, <laughs> you just made it thus. It is <laughs> But what's the combination between manicness and hibernationlessness? It's something the doctors are still looking into, um, <laughs> but they are hoping that you can apply um, some relief from it by having liver three times a week. On a jet ski. I'm <laughs> liver on a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that, Tom, because we were laughing. Oh, God, yes. I said, space, that's the one. Liver on a jet ski. That's it. That's the new album title. For, to, oh, actually, talking about albums, tell us about your current album, which has just recently come out. It's called Pushing the Pool Door. Uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's gone down to rapturous, rapturous acclaim in select circles. Uh, very small circles um uh but um i had a launch gig in glasgow at the glad cafe two night two nights wednesday night is that two nights ago or one night ago two two yeah um so yeah uh and um it, it's it's been <clears throat> uh, on bbc six and bbc scotland and uh uh the the couple of the couple of the tracks from it so and it's a mixture of um song and spoken word soundscapes oh um, nice uh, so yeah that's pushing the pushing the pool door pushing the pool door where do people go if they want to get that item uh three three places that when you say that you could see it. so um it's not you can't stream it so yeah you, you have to download it or buy it so you get it from my website which is tomhouston.org uh if you want to get it today on bandcamp you can get it at bandcamp tom houston music bandcamp or you can catch me at one of my gigs or on my way to the supermarket and um i will no doubt make a sale so uh -huh. personal, personal contact bandcamp or the website right i've got i've just managed to get those i type those in i'll put them up in a moment when you're doing your last song if that's okay absolutely yeah, yeah. um i think they should have more people like in we were talking about peter k earlier they should have more people like in phoenix nights when jerry and the band were in the in, in, uh, entrance to a supermarket come and get your black bin bags on off <laughs> until november and i'd certainly i'd play there yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be good you'd welcome him in tom with your beautiful sounds and your dulcet tones i i think i think that's that's i think i must make my way to the supermarkets and like i push the boy scouts out of the way <laughs> <laughs> not like no, not do you need a hand with your with your with your kind of rat what was it you need a hand with your Packing. shopping Packing. Packing. No, it's like, do you want to do you want to buy this album and get a song or you know pay me to shut me up? <laughs> but you're very good already. We, you've already established that you can change the lyrics uh, as and when is needed, and that would be perfect for the kind of outside of supermarket selling. I expect. Absolutely, you know, I I, I could do that that bit of um what, whatever was on the whatever was on the till. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, we take the last four items and you would connect them up a bit like leave it liver on a jet ski or whatever i think <laughs> i would have backup from jono and your your own good self jeanette as well and <laughs> we could create sort of like experiential art musical art based on the last four items 
in everyone's conveyor belt. That's nice. I and like this. Not, Jono, not... patent this. Patent this now yes. before someone steals this amazing I'm going to get on it. I'm going to get onto my legal oh. department. He's yeah. got it. Yeah. That is such a entrepreneurial spirited fella that he's he's on it. He's on it. Or... <laughs> Something like that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to sort of laugh quietly because if we laugh, <laughs> we it's <cut> out. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to sort of hold it in. But it makes me want to wee after a little while, I must confess. Um, yeah. But, Tom, we're going to uh, head off and do some lovely poetry. Um, oh, yes. And we'll be back with you in a moment or two. Thank you, sir. Before we do, I should mention there's a couple of things um, that I didn't mention. Jenny says, I love both liver and bacon and bangers and mash. If I had to choose, it would be liver and bacon because it hasn't got any cereal mixed in. And this was interesting to me. The only sausages I like are the high percentage meat ones or the gluten free ones because they are have rice in them and are moist compared to the usual sausages available. Tesco doesn't seem to have gluten free anymore. So I gave up looking for them. I think that was why I'm sort of like assuming most of the sausages I have bought are gluten free. And I hadn't realised that it was rice instead of cereal. And I wondered why I liked them probably more than the other ones. So that makes mm. total sense. And I learned something today. Thank you, Dr. Jenny. There, we every both learned something. Exactly. Every day is a school day. It's time for Jeanette's Poem of the Week. It's Poem of the Week. It's song much more than sweet. <laughs> It's poem of the week. It's always man in feet. Well, um, there's such a choice of poems out there all the time. But uh, today's one I chose. I thought um, I did come across this one a while back, but it's always been long and, and we're always trying to cram so much into the show. But now we're kind of merging things and there's no Tom here holding us up with all this chit chat like he does. Um, so I've chosen a slightly longer poem than usual. This is called The Ballad of Rum, and it's by Peter R. Wolveridge. A dog wandered into our garden one day, a friendly old mutt, didn't look like a stray. We never discovered whence he had come, but we brushed him and fed him, and the kids called him Rum. Now, as fam family members, even dogs must work hard, so we put Rum on duty next door in our yard bright-eyed and watchful by night and by day, but not much of a guard dog, I'm sorry to say. He barked at the cats and he'd bark at a toad. He barked at the cattle outside on the road. He barked at the horses. So where did he fail? You see, Rum liked people and he just wagged his tail. He liked the yard labour, an amiable bunch. They fed our dog tidbits and scraps from their lunch. Rum wolfed it all down, but to our dismay, he seemed to get fatter with each passing day. Then one night, when Rum was laid at his ease, a burglar crept in, just as quiet as you please. He saw no alarms, heard no siren howling. No guard dog for sure. They'd be barking and growling. But Rum was awake, and he'd seen him all right, delighted with company this time of night. He flew through the yard, his new friend to greet, and his weight bowled the burglar right off of his feet. The intruder got up and ran off with a wail and rum right behind him, still wagging his tail. He departed the yard he'd come into burgle like a champion athlete clearing a hurdle. But rum couldn't jump gates, so sadly instead, he picked up the thief's wallet and went back to bed. Next morning, the evidence everyone viewed when rum brought it to us, just a little bit chewed. Once given the wallet, the police didn't fail to capture the burglar and put him in jail. His confession, like wildfire, spread through the town. How a big, vicious guard dog had knocked the thief down. We all howled with laughter when we heard the story. And Rum was our hero. He was basking in glory. There's been no attempt since to burgle our yard. For everyone knows now that Rum is on guard. That's called The Ballad of Rum by Peter R. Wolveridge. Oh, I love that. That's a really nice one. I know. It's great. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, about a dog? And who doesn't love dogs? Exactly. There's much Especially ones that just wag their tail at people. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I just was sort of leaning back. Sometimes I've, you know, I need to pop somewhere or 
grabbed something but i just sat back listening nice and chilled very relaxing yeah. your voices and when i say i got a rush off i don't always mean at the poem point it might be <laughs> when one of our singers on it just means i need to quickly use the loo or something doesn't happen very often but uh, that was lovely very it's nice like indeed it. what was the name of the poet uh peter r wolveridge I'm going to have to write that down. Peter R. Wolveridge. Yes. I mean, it's quite American, isn't it? But I, that's all right. That's I, all I right. I noticed that you're talking about liver and bacon earlier. That was uh, yes. based quite a lot on American research. It was. It was Wikipedia, um, which often can be very Americanized, depending on certain aspects. I tried to find the British reading of things, but it's not always time or possible. Time. Well, I'm Sometimes, missing Steve Brady today. He's usually here or, or yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Our American people. Our American friends. Um, I think December's here. And um, I just had an email from a, a friend, a colleague, um, was saying about, you know, something along the lines of the things. They've been a bit rushed off their feet. And you might not have much to do, you believe. But actually, when it hits December, it just seems crazy. Yes. Um, Something made Jenny Lithgow laugh yesterday. She received a pre-panto information email from the Mercury Theatre. It ended with the warning, contains flashing lights, loud bangs, and loud music, and Anthony Stewart Hicks. For those that don't know, he played the dame for several years. He is hilarious and full of 1407. Not he's full of 1407. <laughs> that was the time it was left, and that's what I view. Um <laughs> Yes, um, I did, well, no, we uh, say, say no more about that, but there was a panto on yesterday at the Mercury, I believe. Um, I think it's been on this week because I know, um, uh, Gary took his mum to see it, they were uh, it was the dress rehearsal, and people that live in the um, the retirement establishment and care home kind of opposite the theater, and they all get to go with um, carers and people that work for the NHS. And, so Gary took his mum along, which you know, I haven't spoken to him yet to find out if it was nice. Oh, I bet she loved it. I hope she did. Uh, uh, Jenny's sentence ended, he is hilarious and full of on double entendres. Um, of course. Double entendres. Double entendres. I never pronounce things correctly as well you knew. <laughs> as well you knew. Um, <laughs> we should welcome back Mr Tom Houston before he drops off um, listening to our chatter. Mr. Tom Houston, are you receiving us? Earth to Houston, Houston, <laughs> Earth, Houston. Where cut Come in, Houston. <laughs> yes, Mum. Yeah. What? What is it? What? What? Yeah. Sorry, some very bad ham acting there. It was bad, but we love it. Oh no, it wasn't. We were just talking about the pantomime. <laughs> oh yes, it was. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. Oh yes. What are you going to do to end us? End us completely yeah um what i'll do is i'll do a, a almost like a, a folk song so it's it's not it's a it's a cover of a traditional song um why not but why while i i you've you've triggered a wee memory of of a of a dog called jenny um who the first time i met her it was like a, a like and he said, I'll just go to the house, We've got a dog there, but um, and it was like it's a kind of a guard dog. So I opened the door, and there was Jenny, and it was just like, Oh, hello, Tom, great, come on in, see what you got, just make yourself at home, just take whatever you want. So it's very much like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like Jenny conveyed that sense of welcome within a millisecond, it's amazing. <laughs> love it, love it. We get anyway, and we'll let you talk to us and sing to us and do poems for us until you tell us you're done. Um, and we get out of your way, and we'll say, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time today, we're lucky to have him with us. He's a lovely gentleman, Mr. Tom Houston. <laughs> Oh, the summertime that has come And the trees are sweetly bloom And the wild mountain time 
blooms around the blooming heaven will he go let's he go and we'll all go together to pick that wild mountain time all around blooming heaven will he go let's he go and i will build my love a tower by yon clear and crystal mountain and on it i will show all the flowers of the mountain To pick that wild mountain time all around the blooming heaven will he go as he go and if my true love she don't go I will surely find another to pick that wild mountain time all around the blooming heaven will he go as he go and we'll all go together to pick that wild mountain time all around the blooming heaven will be go let's see hey let's see go let's see and that's me hurrah hurrah beautiful Come ladies and gentlemen oh let's see that's lovely really nice thank you yeah thanks tom thanks for being with us it's always a, a joy to have you with us my friend it's always a pleasure to be warm and toasty and pleasant company ah oh, bless you thank, thank you. you very much indeed um that's you fit us in very well with us <laughs> you do fit in very well with us similar sense of humor i don't know if that's a problem for you <laughs> a problem for <laughs> well it's it's a, no we wouldn't ask you back if it was a problem i suppose that's the honest answer um and you've been on quite a few times so that must be i have been on yes a few, but it, you know it's, I, I really enjoy the conviviality and as you say the similar we take ourselves so seriously on this club it's one of the <laughs> things i look forward to god at least i can take myself seriously on that friday at one o'clock exactly <laughs> Exactly. so serious so serious well that's our show for this afternoon i'm just getting the end credits to come up we're a little bit early that's because the other tom tom hardy wasn't with us nattering away as he likes to do um, going off on tangents going off at tangents i should mention that if you want to see us again this year you've got one final chance we are live on december the 16th that's a friday with our christmas show we have marina florence Emma Miller, Tony James, Flory, Namir, and I think Park and Ride should be joining us as well, if I've remembered that correctly. And if you want to join us um, also next Sunday, the 11th of December, we've got a live public showcase, a sort of variety show at One Colchester Community Hub in Longwire, Longwire Street in um, Colchester from 2 till 4. That's Sunday, the 11th of December. But check out the details on our web page on our um facebook page because the bookings are nearly full so if you want to reserve a space do let us know via phone or email the warm and toasty club at gmail.com the phone number i can't remember um, but i will put up on the website in a moment if you want to come to our public showcase do let us know because tickets are getting very low Tom, thank you for this afternoon my friend um and best wishes to you with the album and all that you do 
Um, and I hope you have a great Christmas. You're a wonderful gentleman, and I'm glad that you're in our lives. Thank you. I applaud that and second hope that. I, hope I can see you again in 2023. Oh, yes, we hope for that too. Um, Jeanette, thanks very much. Um, we will see Amen. you in a couple of weeks, and I'll see you at the live show in a week's time. I'm going to take us all off the screen, put the outro credits off, and say thanks, everyone. You've been a blast. Thanks for making our Friday afternoon and joining us. Um, yeah. Have a good one. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye. We've all got a tale to tell. Times were not always so. But putting it all aside, we made it through by and by. It's warm and toasty in here. Share our laughter, sometimes tears. You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three da -da -da -da. Wrapped in a little white cloth da -da -da -da. Cooking for hours in the old iron pot da -da -da -da. There's a jam roly-poly for tea da -da -da -da. Enough for you and Dad and Grandma and me What did we like the most? Sandwich or peas on toast. Nothing could come close. The bubble and squeak the day after our sun.